Hey guys, Dennis from DC Supershine here. We are working at La Berge's Fuels today. Um, we are polishing a big tanker for them. So it's a 23 footer. We're doing the whole tank. Um, it's the same process as, as on a normal tank. So we're gonna be sanding 320 at the bottom where it's really rough and then 400, 600 and 800 for the rest of it. And uh, the only thing is, it's a little bit like a pontoon because it's a longer tank. I'll be working in sections, so weld to weld. And then when you do your finishing, you do the same thing. You just do your finishing from weld to weld and it'll minimize all those lines that a lot of people have a hard time with. Now don't forget that aluminum is soft. So you're always gonna get a little bit of lines no matter what you try and do. Hey guys, one thing I wanted to mention is whenever you're doing your sanding, so right here we have a weld, which is pretty pronounced. If you want to zoom into this a little bit. So when you're doing your sanding and you bring it right to your weld, this one's pronounced, it's not gonna to matter too, too much and you'll be able to, to blend it in pretty good. It's not gonna leave any grooves. But whenever you get to these lines here, I try and work from, I guess you could call it ripple to ripple or weld to weld. These little ripples here, I work from those, so whenever you do your finishing with your machine, it doesn't show up as much. So same thing for your sanding, but here you're gonna have to. So what I'll do is I'll overlap my sanding. So let's say for the first grit, I stop here. When I do my other grit, I'll overlap it. Like that. It just minimizes the chances of you leaving grooves when you're doing your high speed sanding.
Okay guys, so we're at the finishing process. There's two things I wanna show you first. If you saw in my sanding process, there was a long scratch here. Now if you can zoom in a little bit, most of the scratch is gone, but there's still these little nicks that are deeper. I could have removed those with sanding, but what would have happened is it would have grooved the tank and it would show a lot more than just those little nicks. So I just do my sanding with all the processes and if it's little nicks like that that are a little, little deeper that are left over, I just leave them and usually with whenever you're dunning, they pretty much disappear after that. Now for the finishing, I don't know if you remember in my pontoon video, but I talk about blending. So I work from weld to weld, or in this case, this tank here has like a little bit of a rivet. So I work from, the, from there to there. So whenever my finishing lines, I stop here, they don't show as much. So here, I thought that for some reason, because of the standard mark, the way that I was standing there with the light, I thought that the line was there, but it was a little further. So I had to do this section as well. So it leaves a line here. So I want to show you that, you know, normally I would blend all that in, but if you just set your finishing pad, You just remove the line, basically called cross cutting. You just remove your line like that and then you, you do your finishing process like that after. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Like me on Instagram and Facebook. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to do that. Click the little notification bell if you wanna be notified whenever I post new videos. And there's a lot more to come. See you then.